In spring, they would appear, back from the winter mudflats to their ancient breeding grounds on our fields. They would wheel around our farm in great fairground ride loops, calling for their mates. Or they would walk through the grass, not far from where I sat, all stilt-like legs and elegant curved beaks. How many curlews had there been 20 years ago? No one seemed to know when I asked, and no one was worried. There were curlews all around us, but I could sense a change when I went to help out on my friend's farm further down the valley on better, more improved and more intensively farmed land. I was aware when we climbed off the big tractors for meals that the skies above us were empty. Why don't we notice our nature slipping away? 41% of species are facing a loss in abundance in the last half a decade, with one in seven species, that's 15% of our native wildlife, facing extinction. But just because we the statistics, does that mean that we're really, and I mean this on a personal level, does that mean we're really noticing it disappear? Shifting baseline syndrome is a sociological phenomenon describing a persistent downgrading of perceived normal environmental conditions with every passing generation. Each generation's baseline standard for nature becomes lower than the last, and we tolerate degraded landscapes and pollution more so over time. A combination of a lack of communication between generations, an increasing lack of connection and experience with nature, or by a general lack of education on the topic, each generation is not aware of the differences between their baseline and that of the previous generations. In essence, what we'd consider to be a healthy state of nature, a prior generation would see as degraded. Furthermore, what we're considering as degraded will be seen as the norm by forthcoming generation. Let's put this into perspective. Generation 1 grows up in an environment with an abundance of farmland birds, wildflower meadows, insects, a classic pastoral environment. Their baseline is set based off of this. This nature is normal. Over time, whether by intensive farming, pollution, a lack of wildlife protection or a combination of any number of these factors, the bird populations fall as breeding becomes more difficult, wildflower meadows shrink in size and number, and the insect populations thin out. Generation 2 grows up in this environment, and therefore their baseline is based off of this nature. They perceive it as normal and healthy, while Generation 1 sees it as degraded. The natural decline continues until the farmland birds become rare, if alive at all. There are no wildflower meadows, and insect populations have drastically shrunk to the point where we barely see them. This is a disaster of change for Generation 1, a decline from the normal for Generation 2, but it's the normal baseline for Generation 3 who grew up in this environment. The baseline for what nature should look like has shifted from the English pastoral of Generation 1 to the degraded and desolate landscapes of Generation 3. Except, because this landscape is the new baseline for younger generations, it isn't perceived as degraded and desolate, it is the new normal and green and pastoral. Shifting baseline syndrome has three key consequences. The first and most immediate is an increased societal tolerance for progressive environmental degradation, including declining wildlife populations, loss of natural habitats and increasing pollution. People generally base their evaluation of environmental degradation on how different current environmental conditions are from their own cognitive baseline. Therefore, as they become more accustomed to a degraded environment, they will perceive future environmental degradation as less important. Secondly, shifting baseline syndrome is also likely to alter people's expectations as to what is desirable, as in worth protecting, for a state of the natural environment. This isn't surprising, as most people's beliefs about what a good or healthy condition for the natural environment will be shaped by their personal experience particularly during childhood, as earlier states of nature cannot be recalled as they were not there to experience it. Thirdly, if policymakers and resource managers have false perceptions of past environmental conditions, they may set inappropriate targets for environmental conservation, restoration and management programs. 
In the UK, for example, the 1995 Environment Act and its subsequent variations denote current national park conservation practice as being driven by a static perception of nature, characterised by traditional agriculture. That's those same rolling green hills of pasture and sheep that are so devoid of real native biodiversity and wildlife rather than true wildland. As George Monbiot puts it, quote, Conservation in this country has become indistinguishable from destruction because what we're conserving is an ecocidal system of sheep ranching. Sheep eat everything, and as a result, there's no birds, no insects. We've lost almost everything, and yet we regard that as normal and natural. Shifting baseline syndrome researchers Soga and Gaston propose four key elements in mitigating it. Environmental restoration, increased data collection, reducing the so-called extinction of experience, and education. The key distinction here is environmental restoration, not conservation. Restoration to a more natural and biodiverse landscape gives people a new baseline of which to determine a healthy state of nature and highlights the contrast between it and the rest of our native environments. Rewilding initiatives, for example, provide a beacon of what healthy natural environments are supposed to look like. A perfect example of this is the NEP estate rewilding project in Sussex. Key species were introduced here at NEP, such as the red deer, Tamworth pigs or longhorn cattle, helping to transform what used to be struggling farmland into a thriving ecosystem, complete with extraordinary increases in UK wildlife. Rare species such as turtle doves, nightingales, peregrine falcons or the purple emperor butterfly are now breeding here naturally, having come to the area without needing to be introduced by people. If we are to change the mindsets and shift the baselines of coming generations, environmental restoration, like at NEP, is the perfect way to go about it. While baselines can continue to go down, they can also shift back up. The accumulation of data itself is valuable, as in addition to monitoring the current environment, the data can help in reconstructing historical conditions. Recent progress in molecular and isotope techniques, combined with statistical modelling, has increasingly allowed accurate and detailed reconstruction of past environmental conditions. This therefore allows for more advanced implementation of future conservation and environment restoration. Furthermore, with greater data collection, we allow politicians and legislators to participate in evidence-based decision-making, as opposed to acting on assumptions about environmental issues. According to the 2019 State of Nature report, quote, Insights from disciplines such as psychology and sociology indicate the importance of people's connection to nature for motivating behaviour to help. The State of Nature 2016 report highlighted that, while there was a regional variation, most UK children had lower connection than desired for motivating conservation behaviour. This connection to nature describes our relationship with nature and our perception of belonging to the wider natural community. The report describes connection as complex and multidimensional, not developed just through contact, as, quote, simply getting people outside does not mean they will grow a wildflower meadow or petition for nature. Through a combination of increased opportunity with better access to higher quality green spaces and increasing people's desire to get out into nature, perhaps through environmental education or social marketing programs, we can educate the population on what's at stake what we've lost and could continue to lose, and the potential for better environments than the landscapes we've built our baselines off of. Doing so targets the lack of understanding over the generations before us that allows shifting baseline syndrome to thrive, and helps break down the apathy that people may feel towards our natural environment by highlighting just how far the degradation has truly come and encouraging a feeling of connection with nature, thus fostering a desire to help do something about it. Putting it simply, why don't we notice our nature disappearing? 
we don't notice our nature disappearing because we've never properly understood what it was like to exist in the first place. We simply base our expectations of what the presence of nature to be off of our own understanding of the world. And since our natural world is already severely degraded, our understanding is becoming increasingly skewed over time. This does not mean that conservation is a losing battle doomed to time, however. Instead, through education and providing the opportunity for our people to experience the natural world, to encourage people and give them the will to fight for it, we can counter and fight this ignorance and restore our standards and understanding of a healthy environment to a much higher level, thus allowing the coming generations to instead take up the good fight for a better environment and continually restore what we thought was destroyed so long ago. We've tripled the number of trees on our farm, and we hope to plant many more in the years to come, to run more strips of scrub and woodland through our land. That won't create a forest, but it will be something. I want to create a farm full of shelter and patchiness and shade, with leaf matter everywhere returned to the soil. I want to make our farm even better for wintering birds to come for berries and fruit. Our farm solves nothing on its own, it's just a place where we can make our start. But all of us together can transform our landscapes one little act at a time.